In this Inkscape video, I'll be demonstrating how to make swirls like you see here. I'll be using Inkscape version 0.48. I'm going to start by moving this out of the way to give myself space to work. And for the swirls, I'm going to be using the draw tool. So I click on this And for the settings, I want to make sure that the mode is set to create regular Bezier path. And then I have the smoothing set clear up to 50. That'll help smooth out the irregularities as I draw. And then the shape, I'm going to set this to triangle in. And so now when I draw by pressing and holding the left mouse button, I get a triangle shape that follows the path that I just drew. So this is the base of the triangle right here and it stretches it along this path. So I could for instance draw a spiral shape and again it stretched a triangle. This is the base of the triangle and this is the tip of the triangle. It stretched it along the path that I drew. So this uses a triangle shape, but I can also define my own shape that I would like to use. I'm going to do that by selecting the Bezier tool. And then I'm just going to draw a simple shape here. And now I'm going to go press the select button. And then with this shape, I'm going to right click. I'm going to select copy. And this will copy this shape to the clipboard. And then if I go back to the draw tool, and this time for the shape, I'm going to select from clipboard. And now it's going to use this shape that I just defined. So now if I draw a path, you'll see that this shape that I drew up here is stretched along the path that I just drew. So I'm going to draw another path here. And you'll see again that this same shape was stretched along this path. Now I can take this path that I've created and I'll go up to the select button and press that. And I'm going to press control D to make a copy of this. And then I'm going to press control D again to make another copy. And what I want to do is show you what happens when I change the size of this. So I'm going to go up to the corner arrow here, drag this down, and I'm going to shrink it. And you'll notice that it didn't maintain the same proportions that it had before. So if I want to keep the same proportions, I need to change this to a path. So this other copy, if I select it and I go up to the path menu and select object to path. Now if I resize this object, proportionally it will be correct. And so you can see the difference between these two. And you may not want it to stay proportional as you resize it. So you can either change it to a path or not depending upon what you're trying to achieve. So I wanted to keep it proportional. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one and delete it. And I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to drag it back over here but now I'm going to go up to this button right here and rotate this. And now with it rotated, I can just drag it over here and kind of add it on to what I had before. You can easily create more complex designs by just taking a swirl that you've made and rotating it and resizing it and maybe flipping it and then bringing it back and connecting it to your original swirl. I'm going to go ahead and delete these 
first two triangle swirls that I made and get them out of the way. And now I want to select all three of these swirls that I have and I'm going to give them some color. So I want to go down on my palette and I'm going to find some blues. And I'm going to left click on this color here to set the fill color. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key and press this dark color here and that will set the stroke color or the border or outline color. And now what I want to do is combine all three of these into a single object. Now if I just go up to the path tool and I select union you'll see that I have a distorted image here. So let me undo this. But if before I turn it into a union I first select object to path then this will work as I want it to when I select union. And now you'll see that this is all one object without any overlapping lines. Now to make this look nicer I'm going to add a background to it. So I'm going to select the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle shape. And then I'm going to press the select key and using this button here I'm going to move this to the bottom. And I also want to give this background a gradient. So I'm going to select the gradient tool. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select a linear gradient and then I press and hold the left mouse button as I drag this up and now with this node right here selected you can see it in blue I'm going to select a darker color for that and then on this bottom square node here I'm going to left click that to select it and turn it blue and then I'm going to select a lighter color for that and so now I have my gradient and then next I'm going to go to the select tool and I'm going to select the swirl object that I've created and I'm going to press and hold the shift key while I click on a lighter color and that will change the border to a different color and next I'm going to press control D to make a copy of my swirls and I can move them to the side here so that you see that I have a copy and I'm going to go up and I'm going to press this button here to mirror this and then once I have it mirrored I can come down and I can move this again and I can just find a spot here to where this looks like it's what I want and this looks nice this position looks good and next I'm going to press and hold the shift key while I left click on the first swirl that I made and I'm going to group these together so I'm going to go up to object and group and now that I have them grouped together I'm going to apply a gradient to it so I'm going to press the gradient button and I want to make sure again that I have this set to linear gradient and then I press and hold the left mouse button while I drag this up and then with this top node selected you see it in blue I'm gonna set this to a light blue color and I'm using light blue because the background is a dark blue and then I want to give this kind of a glowing effect so I'm going to go up to the select tool and with this selected I'm going to press control D to make a copy and then I'm going to change this copy to a white color and then I want to add a blur to this white copy and so I'm going to go up to the object menu and select fill and stroke and that will bring up my fill and stroke dialog box and the blur right here I'm going to set that to 5 and then with this still selected I'm going to use this button right here to move this down so that it's below my original swirl. 
and now this gives it kind of a glowing effect. So this was a demonstration of how you can use swirls to create some pretty fancy designs. With a little imagination, you can achieve some pretty impressive results. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment. Have a great day.